From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Brought to you by SSP TV and the Standard Speaker. A rough week in Hazleton. One homicide, two shooting incidents, and somebody apparently shot out the window of a police vehicle. What's going on? How people can protect themselves in Hazleton. Our top story on News 13 for this Friday. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kathy Bozinski. The shootings in Hazleton over the past week have really taken a toll on people's nerves, but law enforcers say they shouldn't be afraid. Christina Papa got some safety tips from police and found out what three numbers can save a life. Wendy Nunez double checks the doors to her home when she locks them. Saturday night's drive-by shooting that killed 19-year-old Angel Villalobos happened too close to home. A lot of stuff been happening in this town and it's so crazy. It's like I feel like it's one thing after another and I feel like I'm not really safe. Wendy isn't the only one who's double checking doors. Hazleton police know the area is weary after the shootings this week. Detective Kenneth Zapofsky wants people to know the week's events were all isolated incidences. He says people should feel safe. Series of events that have occurred and it can be overwhelming to the people. But one thing I want to assure them is these events do occur, unfortunately, but it's not some mass conspiracy where, you know, the whole town's being overran. It's just, unfortunately, bad timing with isolated incidents that aren't connected to each other that just seem to pop up. Hazleton police have been working hard on the several isolated cases that happened this week, but they need the community's help. A great majority of the crime that's solved is actually solved because the public pays attention. You know, it's somebody calling, I see a suspicious car, I see somebody that doesn't belong in my neighborhood. You know, who knows better who should be around your house than you. Detective Zapofsky says don't be afraid to call 911. 911 is for any police issue. That's the way you're getting a police officer. If you see a suspicious vehicle and you go, oh, I'm not sure if that's an emergency, it doesn't, 911 is not exclusively for emergencies. I can't stress that enough. Right outside of Wendy's home, there are still fresh flowers and candles lit in memory of Angel. She says she makes sure that her doors and windows are locked to ensure the safety of her family. I always like, bo like both doors on my house, like always in like, sometimes I come back to just double check their clothes, like, cause, it's just crazy. Police say the best way to protect yourself is to take preventative measures, lock your door, take care of your neighbors, and most importantly, don't be afraid to dial 911. Something like it's either 2 or 3% of all crime is solved exclusively by law enforcement. That means the other 97% comes from people giving us information, so you have to call. Anyone with information about any of the incidences this week is asked to call the police station or simply dial 911. Christina Papa, News 13, Hazleton. Parents of students in the Hazleton Area School District may have seen an increase in security through this week. School officials assuring them there's nothing to be worried about and that the increase in security is due to those multiple shootings that occurred. Administrators hold security meetings every week to review the levels of security and what's been going on in the community. That's when officials decide what measures should be taken at the schools. As a precaution, they decided to heighten security and invite police to patrol district buildings. Schools are a reflection of the communities that they serve and we want to ensure our students and staff and parents that uh, whatever is occurring uh, within the local community does not spill over into our school. And that increase in security will remain in effect until officials believe that the violence around the area has settled down. A Hazleton attorney who played a huge role in Luzerne County's Kids for Cash scandal is out of prison and in a halfway house. Robert Powell has been transferred to the transitional facility in Florida after spending most of an 18-month prison sentence at a minimum security camp near Pensacola. Powell, whose law license is suspended, was the owner of two juvenile detention centers. He pleaded guilty to paying disgraced judges Mark Chivarella and Michael Conahan nearly $800,000 in return for the judges funneling young people into his detention centers. Well, right now, hundreds of people from our region and all across the country have gathered to pay respects to a local corrections officer who was killed in the line of duty earlier this week. 
It's taking place at Greater Nanticoke Area High School's gymnasium, where the public viewing for Eric Williams is being held. Honor Guard delegations comprised of federal corrections officers from all across the country have traveled to Williams' hometown to pay their respects and show support for his family. The 34-year-old federal corrections officer was killed Monday evening in a vicious attack by an inmate at the federal prison at Canaan in Wayne County. The FBI is investigating Williams' murder by an inmate who beat him and stabbed him repeatedly with a homemade knife. The public viewing for Eric Williams will continue until 8 p.m. tonight at the high school from which he graduated in 1996. And still ahead on News 13, the federal sequester has arrived and the cuts are in place. What the president is saying about the future and the inaction of Congress. But one thing Congress has done was beefed up the legislation that protects women from violence. We'll tell you how it does that when News 13 continues. It's time for the Movie Minute on News 13, your weekly look at what's playing inside Regal Cinema 10 just outside the Laurel Mall. New this weekend, Jack the Giant Slayer. This movie tells the story of an ancient war that is reignited when a young farmhand unwittingly opens a gateway between our worlds and a race of fearsome giants. Also new, The Last Exorcism Part 2. Also playing this weekend, Dark Skies, A Good Day to Die Hard, Snitch, Safe Haven, Identity Thief, 21 and Over, Warm Bodies, and Escape from Planet Earth. Don't forget to join the Regal Crowns Club for free to earn points towards free popcorn, drinks, and movie tickets. For all the show times, call 450-7454. To speak to movie attendant, call 450-7340. And to find the entire schedule online, visit our website at ssptv.com. Well, the federal sequester cuts we've been hearing about for months have kicked in. In a news conference today, President Obama said that those who work for the armed forces, border patrol and airports and the business communities which support them will probably be the first to feel the pinch. He also blamed the Republicans in Congress with failing to take any action to soften cuts by making them more fair. And he also outlined what needs to be done for the future. I do believe that we can and must replace these cuts with a more balanced approach that asks something from everybody. Smart spending cuts, entitlement reform, tax reform that makes the tax code more fair for families and businesses without raising tax rates. Uh, also that we can responsibly lower the deficit without laying off workers or forcing parents to scramble for childcare or slashing financial aid for college students. And the president did hold a last-minute White House meeting with congressional leaders to avoid the cuts. It lasted less than an hour without any results. The House has passed a bill that will extend the Violence Against Women Act, which helps thousands of women and men every year. Christina Papa found out what extending this bill really means to folks in our area who may be in desperate situations. Allie didn't know where to turn when she and her two children needed help getting out of an abusive relationship. A lot of it was a very much an emotional battle trying to get through everything. I'm leaving a four-year relationship it was pretty hard to do. Luckily, she found a safe haven with Schuylkill County Women in Crisis. The staff being here was very helpful. Like They talked with me about pretty much everything and anything I could think of. My worries, concern, let me know I wasn't alone in this whole ordeal. And but this organization, which helps hundreds of women every year in Schuylkill County, needs the proper funding to help families find a better life for themselves. I think that what's distressing to us, we see the difference that it's making. But instead of seeing more money come into this, we're seeing less. Thankfully, some support won't be cut. The House passed and sent the president an extension of the Violence Against Women Act, also known as VAWA. The whole thinking behind VAWA is a recognition that domestic and sexual violence are community problems that require a community solution. VAWA has helped SWIC gain support from the community. Executive Director of SWIC, Sally Casey, is happy about the news. The knowledge that VAWA was renewed is a comfort and it may continue to serve as a viable support. And with the funding, SWIC is also able to offer housing for families trying to get off their feet right here in Schuylkill County. It was nice to know that there is a building like this around here to help all these women out. But the organization isn't out of the weeds just yet. They aren't sure how much will be cut after the sequester. We've received notice from one funder that we should begin to anticipate 8% cuts and we don't know about the others. 
Sally says they do the best they can with the funding they have because giving people like Allie and her little family a second chance on life is worth more than money. Otherwise still stuck in the abusive situation that I was in. Um, if it wasn't for this place, this really gave me a second chance at everything. Christina Papa, News 13, Schuylkill County. Time now for our regional weather from the National Weather Service. Checking the radar pretty much the same as yesterday. Not as bad, though. We're in a pattern where we're seeing either sprinkles or snow showers, but no real accumulation or any road hazards. Our creative condition night is by Christopher Placencia. He's a second grader at West Hazleton Elementary, and he drew a beautiful summer morning where he and his friends are in the park, and that's some park. It has a slide, it has swings, it has a basketball court, and it has somebody skydiving out of an airplane. Now let's take a look at News 13 weather from the National Weather Service for Greater Hazleton. Tonight, a chance of flurries, mostly cloudy with a low down to 21 degrees. And for Saturday, cloudy, occasional flurries, a high near 34, overnight low tomorrow around 20. Now heading to Schuylkill County tonight, mostly cloudy with a low around 25 degrees then for Saturday mostly cloudy with a high about 35 overnight low around 21. <laughs> here at the Hazleton Animal Shelter for this week's Adopt Me. And today we have a, a little larger dog named Chester. That's correct. This Chester is a little bigger than our last Chester, and uh, this one has no last name. <laughs> uh, Chester is an adult Brittany Spaniel. He's about four or five years old. He's very affectionate. He has a lot of play in him as well. He's definitely your typical working breed. You can see he's running around the yard sniffing, looking for things to do, looking for work. He's um, Definitely not the type of dog that would jump up, jump up on you. He loves human companionship. He wants to be by you, but he's not unruly at all. He's a very good-mannered dog. Um, he also happened to test positive for Lyme. As you know, we test them for heartworm and Lyme, and we're medicating him with uh, pills. He gets two and a half in the morning and two and a half at, uh, at night. Okay, and him being a, considered a working breed, would you recommend somebody have a larger yard for him? Yes, it would be good if he has a, a large yard to explore, and especially if he has uh, daily walks. Uh, he's a very active dog. He's affectionate, but he's not jumpy and licky. Uh, he basically just wants a job to do and uh, people to do it around. And there's Chester for our featured dog of the week. Now let's head on into the cat colony. And now we're here in the female cat colony with an unusual cat, a, a male cat. Yes, this is Gunther. Uh, he was moved up here to one of the uh, separate cages in the front because he actually does not get along all that well with other cats. He would be best suited to a household that doesn't have any cats already. He likes to be the center of attention. He has a lot of personality. He's young and very, very playful. Um, he likes to be held for a while, but eventually he gets fidgety and he wants to go play. He's starting to get fidgety. <laughs> He's a very, very loving cat, though. He loves to play. Um, he loves to um, be around people. He's a domestic short hair, and he's already neutered and current on his vaccinations. And, of course, is uh, uh, negative for feline leukemia and FIV. And um, a typical food that, cat, that, that cats love to eat is fish, but one of Gunther's favorite foods is french fries? Yes, uh, we just discovered today that Gunther does love uh, french fries. So um, <clears throat> aside from cat food, you can do, give him fast food as well, although we don't recommend it because it's not that healthy. <laughs> okay, and there's Gunther, so stop on down and take a look at him because he's begging to get out of this female cat colony. If you guys at home are interested in uh, adoption or have any questions, just stop on down at 101 North Poplar Street. And for this week's Adopt Me, I'm Stephanie Gorney. Got to take it easy on those french fries. Let's check the winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck if you played. The daily number is 424, big four, 7142, quinto, 05495, and the treasure hunt, 2, 9, 13, 24, and 30. Hope you won. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's social news. First tonight, happy birthday to Bernadine Suda. This wish comes with love from your family and friends. Tonight's Talk of the Town report, the American Cancer Society Telethon is presenting a Chinese auction on Sunday, March 24th in the Lakeside Ballroom in Barnesville. Fun for the whole family begins at noon with hundreds of items available, plus entertainment, bake sale, refreshments, and more. For information or advanced tickets, call 570-645-4228. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. 
News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Geraldine E. Paler, formerly of Sugarloaf, funeral services will be held Saturday at 10.30 a.m. from the McCune Funeral Home. Friends may call Friday from 7 to 10 p.m. Margaret Screptak of Beaver Meadows. Funeral is Monday at 10 a.m. from the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. Friends may call Monday from 9 to 10 a.m. Rose Sacco, formerly of Shenandoah. Arrangements will be announced by the Stauffer Bresnik Funeral Home. John Sterk of Shenandoah. Arrangements will be announced by the Stauffer Bresnik Funeral Home. And John F. Burke of Hazleton. Arrangements will be announced by the Boyle Funeral Home. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop, located on 15th Street in Hazleton, for delivery to all local funeral homes, and Palm Crosses are now on sale. Call 570-454-0111. And by Mia's. Once again, the Hazleton area's number one rated restaurant. Call 570-501-3410 for information on luncheon packages. Well, a 109th birthday is cause to celebrate, and that's what they did at West Hazleton Elementary Middle School this morning. I am Sam. That Sam I am. That Sam I am. I do not like that Sam I am. And that includes inviting guest readers like our own Janine Mazurkevich to help celebrate the big birthday for Dr. Seuss. Everybody in Mrs. Schaefer's second grade class wore hats, just like the cat, as Janine treated everybody to some green eggs and ham. While it's all fun and fantasy, it also helps young minds learn that reading even fun books like Dr. Seuss will help them grow. He read in a lot of books and he loved to read books and you know, it was his birthday. You will learn a lot of different words once you go to bigger grades. In case you didn't know, Dr. Seuss's real name is Theodore Seuss Geisel, and he wrote 46 children's books. Plenty more news and information headed your way on News 13. The Congress beefs up legislation to prevent violence against women under any circumstance. That story and much more news when the 13 crew comes right back. Political infighting in Washington allowed a powerful law against domestic violence to expire two years ago. Congress finally renewed it this week. What does it mean for women suffering domestic abuse? Our top story on News 13 at 4.30. From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Good evening and thanks so much for staying with us tonight. I'm Kathy Bozinski. Well, the House has passed a bill that will extend the Violence Against Women Act, which helps thousands of women and men every year. Christina Papa found out what extending this bill really means to people in our area who may be in desperate situations. Allie didn't know where to turn when she and her two children needed help getting out of an abusive relationship. A lot of it was a very much an emotional battle trying to get through everything. I, leaving a four-year relationship was pretty hard to do. Luckily, she found a safe haven with Schuylkill County Women in Crisis. The staff being here was very helpful. Like They talked with me about pretty much everything and anything I could think of. My worries, concern, let me know I wasn't alone in this whole ordeal. And but this organization, which helps hundreds of women every year in Schuylkill County, needs the proper funding to help families find a better life for themselves. I think that what's distressing to us, we see the difference that it's making. But instead of seeing more money come into this, we're seeing less. Thankfully, some support won't be cut. The House passed and sent the president an extension of the Violence Against Women Act, also known as VAWA. The whole thinking behind VAWA is a recognition that domestic and sexual violence are community problems that require a community solution. VAWA has helped SWIC gain support from the community. Executive Director of SWIC, Sally Casey, is happy about the news. The knowledge that VAWA was renewed is a comfort and it may continue to serve as a viable support. And with the funding, SWIC is also able to offer housing for families trying to get off their feet right here in Schuylkill County. It was nice to know that there is a building like this around here to help all these women out. But the organization isn't out of the weeds just yet. They aren't sure how much will be cut after the sequester. We've received notice from one funder that we should begin to anticipate 8% cuts and we don't know about the others. Sally says they do the best they can with the funding they have because giving people like Allie and her little family a second chance on life is worth more than money. Otherwise still stuck in the abusive situation that I was in. Um, if it wasn't for this place, this really gave me a second chance at everything. 
Christina Papa, News 13, Schuylkill County. Right now, hundreds of people from our region and all across the country have gathered to pay respects to a local corrections officer who was killed in the line of duty earlier this week. This is the, look at that line. This is the scene at Greater Nanticoke Area High School Gymnasium where the public viewing for Eric Williams is being held. Honor Guard delegations comprised of federal corrections officers from all across the country have traveled to Williams' hometown to pay their respects and show support for his family. The federal, the 34-year-old federal corrections officer was killed Monday evening in a vicious attack by an inmate at the federal prison at Canaan in Wayne County. FBI investigating Williams' murder by an inmate who beat him and stabbed him repeatedly with a homemade knife. The public viewing for Eric Williams will continue until 8 o'clock tonight at the high school from which he graduated back in 1996. A Hazleton attorney who played a huge role in Luzerne County's Kids for Cash scandal is out of prison and in a halfway house. Robert Powell has been transferred to the traditional tr transitional facility in Florida after spending most of an 18-month prison sentence at a minimum security camp near Pensacola. Powell, whose law license is suspended, was the owner of two juvenile detention centers. He pleaded guilty to paying disgraced judges Mark Chivarella and Michael Conahan nearly $800,000 in return for the judges funneling young people into his detention centers. Well, the federal sequester cuts we've been hearing about for months now have kicked in. In a news conference today, President Obama said that those who work for the armed forces, the border patrol, and in airports, and the business communities which support them will be the first to feel the pinch. He also blamed the Republicans in Congress with failing to take any action to soften cuts by making them more fair. And he also outlined what needs to be done for the future. I do believe that we can and must replace these cuts with a more balanced approach that asks something from everybody. Smart spending cuts, entitlement reform, tax reform that makes the tax code more fair for families and businesses without raising tax rates. Uh, also that we can responsibly lower the deficit without laying off workers or forcing parents to scramble for child care or slashing financial aid for college students. The president did hold a last-minute White House meeting with congressional leaders to try and avoid the cuts. It lasted less than an hour without any results. And coming up on News 13, the snow showers will continue, but no real snowfall. We'll have your weekend forecast coming up on News 13 weather. But first, it's been a nerve-shattering week full of shootings in Hazleton. What can residents do to protect themselves? We'll tell you just ahead on News 13. The shootings in Hazleton over the past week have really taken a toll on people's nerves, but law enforcers say they shouldn't be afraid. Christina Papa got some safety tips from police and found out what three numbers can save your life. Wendy Nunez double checks the doors to her home when she locks them. Saturday night's drive by shooting that killed 19 year old Angel Villa Lobos happened too close to home. A lot of stuff been happening in this town, and it's so crazy. It's like I feel like it's one thing after another, and I feel like I'm not really safe. Wendy isn't the only one who's double-checking doors. Hazleton police know the area is weary after the shootings this week. Detective Kenneth Zapofsky wants people to know the week's events were all isolated incidences. He says people should feel safe. Series of events that have occurred, and it can be overwhelming to the people. But one thing I want to assure them is, these events do occur, unfortunately, but it's not some mass conspiracy where, you know, the whole town's being overran. It's just, unfortunately, bad timing with isolated incidents that aren't connected to each other that just seem to pop up. Hazleton police have been working hard on the several isolated cases that happened this week, but they need the community's help. A great majority of the crime that's solved is actually solved because the public pays attention. You know, it's somebody calling, I see a suspicious car, I see somebody that doesn't belong in my neighborhood. You know, who knows better who should be around your house than you. Detective Zapofsky says don't be afraid to call 911. 911 is for any police issue. That's the way you're getting a police officer. If you see a suspicious vehicle and you go, oh, I'm not sure if that's an emergency, it doesn't, 911 is not exclusively for emergencies. I can't stress that enough. Right outside of Wendy's home, there are still fresh flowers and candles lit in memory of Angel. She says she makes sure that her doors and windows are locked to ensure the safety of her family. I always like, bo like both doors on my house, like always in like, sometimes I come back to just double check their clothes, like, cause, it's just crazy. Police say the best way to protect yourself is to take preventative measures, lock your door, take care of your neighbors, and most importantly, don't be afraid to dial 911. Something like it's either 2 or 3% of all crime 
is solved exclusively by law enforcement. That means the other 97% comes from people giving us information, so you have to call. Anyone with information about any of the incidences this week is asked to call the police station or simply dial 911. Christina Papa, News 13, Hazleton. Parents of students in the Hazleton area district may have seen an increase in security throughout this week. School officials assuring them there's nothing to be worried about and that the increase is due to those multiple shootings that occurred. Administrators hold security meetings every week to review the levels of security and what's been going on in the community. That's when officials decide what measures and security should be taken at the schools. As a precaution, they decided to heighten the security and invite police to patrol district buildings. Schools are a reflection of the communities that they serve and we want to ensure our students and staff and parents that uh, whatever is occurring uh, within the local community does not spill over into our school. The increase in security will remain in effect until officials believe that violence around the area has settled down. And time now for our regional weather from the National Weather Service. Checking the radar pretty much the same as yesterday. We're in a pattern where we're seeing either sprinkles or snow showers, but no real accumulation or road hazards. Our creative condition tonight is a pretty cool one. It's by Christopher Placencia, and he drew a beautiful summer morning where he and his friends were at the park. And it's quite the park. It has a slide, it has some swings, it has a basketball court, and it has an airplane that you can skydive out of. <laughs> Looks like fun. Now let's take a look at News 13 weather from the National Weather Service for Greater Hazelton for tonight. A chance of flurries, mostly cloudy with a low down to 21. Then for your weekend, Saturday, cloudy with occasional flurries, a high of 34, overnight low down to 20. On Sunday, mostly cloudy, a chance of snow showers again, a high near 32, low of 16. And Monday, mostly sunny, high up to 31, low down to 21. Tuesday, mostly sunny with a high near 37 degrees. Taking a look at Schuylkill County tonight, mostly cloudy with a low around 25. For Saturday, mostly cloudy, high of 35, overnight lows of 21. For Sunday, partly sunny with a high about 32, nighttime low down to 19 degrees. For Monday, mostly sunny, a high of 34, low down to 23. And on Tuesday, partly sunny with a high up to 38 degrees. And still ahead on News 13, the basketball playoff action continues on all levels. Fred Barletta will have it on News 13 Sports. And then it's time to put on our striped hats and have some green eggs and ham. A susical birthday when News 13 continues. SSP TV Sports on News 13 with Fred Barletta Jr. and Ron Marchetti. Championship weekend throughout northeastern and central Pennsylvania, and uh, there's actually not one, not two, three Hazleton area teams alive and well in those. None of them are basketball. What a rarity. Nobody left in the District 2 or District 11 basketball tournament this weekend, but not the case in swimming. Matter of fact, the uh, swimmers from Hazleton area are going to be going after gold, both boys and girls. Show you what we mean. On the boys' side at the district championships this weekend, well, uh, you want to know where they stand? Hazel Tenary could be the team to beat. Just take a look. As you go up and down the line here, they have a, a bevy of top seeds going in. It starts with uh, a couple of relays, and you see Tyler Farley, Ryan Paisley. You've heard those names all season long. Now, the girls will be there as well, and you know what? Don't be surprised if you have a lot of girls joining the boys on the medal stand and going after district gold. As you take a look, there are uh, two relay teams involved. That'd be the 200 medley and the 200 freestyle, but we also have Haley Kendall, tops in the 50 and the 100 backstroke. Now, the districts are over in wrestling, but it's the weekend for regionals, and that'll be down in Bethlehem, and we got two wrestlers going there. First of all, it'll be Larry Romanchik at 126 pounds. He was number two the district tournament a week ago. There you see his matchup against uh, Kristen Goich of Blue Mountain. And I'm going to tell you what, the way the brackets look, Romanchik can, absolutely. He's got at least an even money 50-50 chance to advance to Hershey next week. Taylor Schemmerhorn, he needs one more win to get his 100th career win. First up, Jimmy Galasso, a father judge out of the city of Philadelphia. I like Schemmerhorn in that one. He's going to have a little bit tougher time than Romanchik but uh, it's not out of the question. Shemmerhorn shows up with his A game this weekend. He too could be advancing next week. Bowling, it's the Eastern Pennsylvania Regionals going on down in Reading. That's a two-day event today and tomorrow. 
Both the boys and girls from Hazleton area are there trying to qualify for the Pennsylvania State Championships in bowling. So there's a, an awful lot going on there. Back to basketball and down to the McGeehan Gymnasium last night where they were deciding the championships. Girls and boys for the Junior High Anthracite League. Our Mike Madry was there. The place was rocking and rolling. Biggest crowd of the year in the McGeehan Gymnasium for Junior High Basketball. Junior High playoffs in Hazleton. Freeland girls going up against the Holy Family squad. Freeland girls looking to pick up right where they left off in their undefeated season so far. And boy, did they ever. This game started off slow, but picked up offensively, and it was all Freeland. They hit a lot of tough shots, and they were all over the ball. They played solid defense. And as early as late in the first quarter, Freeland let the Serena know where this game was heading. Well, our coaches push us really hard to do a good offense, so we're really happy that we did good. Freeland played tight defense throughout this game, but Kendra File was a force in the offensive game, quarterbacking this girls team to 46 points and winning 46 to 22. Freeland finishes with their second consecutive undefeated season. As well as file played, so did teammate Alexis Shido. She was right there with her. Here's Shido after the game. Well, I'm really excited, but sad, upset that it's over because we really would like to play more with our coaches and our team because we love our team. But we're excited that we were able to go undefeated two years ago. Second game, and we've got some boys basketball on tap. Crosstown rivals Freeland and Hazleton going head to head. Freeland looking to pick up its 20th win in a row, and things would not start off so hot for the squad. They found momentum with a huge three from Aaron Kelmer that gave Freeland a 21-18 lead going into half. Freeland did not look back after this shot. It's a huge momentum booster for us. We just, we were down the whole game until I hit the three, so. Freeland continued playing their style of ball, slowing down Hazleton, and the Cougars would really fight for this game. But the defensive style Freeland implicated didn't allow the Cougars to get going offensively. Freeland, who led the whole second half, holds on to their lead despite Hazleton trailing by three going into the fourth. Freeland wins 37-30. Here's the coach after the game on the endeavors his team faced from day one. Not only proud of the team, I'm proud of the parents of these kids and the faculty and everybody in Freeland and period. I'm blessed to coach this team. I mean, these kids are fantastic uh, in, the, in the classroom and on the basketball court. Uh, I told these kids there wouldn't be another place on their age level where I would coach in, in the United States of America, and I mean that. Well, the Freeland girls and boys basketball team both clinching their prospective championships. Now, talking to the coach after the game, both coaches, they said, it's very promising to see these junior high teams doing so well, and they hope it definitely transpires into varsity in these upcoming years. Mike Madry, Channel 13 Sports in Hazleton. End of the week, and uh, well, you know what that means. You got to head up to Bottlenecks. It's the all-night happy hour. They got half-price apps and drink specials from open to close, and that includes the huge imported beer selection, pool dart shuffleboard, kitchen open until midnight, they got those 14 flat screen TVs. Get up and you're going to watch the games tonight up at Bottlenecks. They sponsor us right here on SSP TV. Goodbye high school basketball season. Goodbye Pope Benedict who stepped down officially yesterday at 2 p.m. our time. Goodbye February. Hello March and hi everybody on this first day of the month. I'm not sure how long it has been. Maybe never that our Local, eight local high school basketball seasons were completed before March 1st. The Hazel area boys and girls, along with Marion, MMI, and Wedley. It may have happened before, but I don't think so. Mother of God! Let's review how it happened. The Cougars lost last Saturday to Scranton in Berwick. It was a disheartening loss, but the Wyoming Valley Conference champions must look ahead to next season, which looks very promising. They're loaded with returning juniors plus an undefeated JV team. The Cougars did win nine in a row before the finale. Also on Saturday, the Marion boys beat Shenandoah Valley by 10 to advance, and the Phillies diddled that over Nativity, both winning by the same exact score, 40 to 30. But on Wednesday, all the wallpaper came down. The Lady Cougars of Hazel Area lost a tough 41-39 game to arch rival Wyoming Valley West in Exeter. Gavio's gals finished at 13 to 10. The Marion boys lost to Molina area by seven at Martz Hall. The Colts finished at 18 and six. 
The Marion Phillies also were eliminated by Notre Dame. East Strasburg by eight. Brutus Brigade ended their campaign at 16-9. The MMI boys lost to Susquehanna in Scranton by five while closing out its season. Flanagan's Fair Nuts end at 3-20. and 20. What else? Hazel Arias, Eddie Kovac, and Kaylee Judash, both seniors, finished second at the District 2 Class 3A Sub-Regional Diving Championships at the Wilkes-Barre CYC. Two Cougar wrestlers are wrestling this weekend because they both advanced last week. Sophomore Larry Romanchik and senior Taylor Shammerhorn are competing in the Northeast Regional Tournament that gets underway tonight at Bethlehem Freedom High School. Hazel Arias, Sal Biazzi, was named WVC Division I MVP, no surprise there. He scored 588 points in 22 games. Actually, Biazzi is exactly 198 points away from becoming the top career scorer in Hazel Area school history. Last night, Freeland's eighth grade boys and girls clinched Anthracite League championships before a large crowd at Hazel Area High School. Both of those clubs are unbeaten. In fact, the girls are 39-0 over the past two years. The runner-ups last night were Hazelton and Holy Family Academy. Congratulations to Freeland, coaches, teams, and all concerned. And also to Jimmy Johnson, who won his second Daytona 500. See you Monday. Till that be a good sport. Stay loose. Finally tonight, a 109th birthday is cause to celebrate. And that's what they did at West Hazleton Elementary Middle School this morning. I am Sam. That Sam I am. That Sam I am. I do not like that Sam I am. And that includes inviting guest speakers like our own Janine Mazurkevich to help celebrate the big birthday for Dr. Seuss. Everybody in Mrs. Schaefer's second grade class wore hats, just like the cat, as Janine treated everybody to some green eggs and ham. And while it's all fun and fantasy, it also helps young minds learn that reading even fun books like Dr. Seuss will help them grow. He read in a lot of books, and he loved to read books. And, you know, it was his birthday. You will learn a lot of different words once you go to bigger grades. And in case you didn't know, Dr. Seuss's real name is Theodore Seuss Geisel, and he wrote 46 children's books. And that's News 13 for your Friday. Thank you so much for joining us. You can catch this newscast again with rebroadcast throughout tonight, or just go to News 13's website any old time, ssptv.com, where you'll always find the local and regional news you need and the community news you want. For the entire News 13 team, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kathy Bozinski. Have a great weekend.